Shalom. This time I would like to talk about the 10th of Nisan. The 10th of Nisan, the meaning. What is the meaning of the 10th of Nisan? Well, it's a day of setting apart. And the first time we see this, this is with the Passover lamb. Actually, it's a ram because it has to be one year old, you know, uh, but uh, traditionally it's called the lamb because John talks about the lamb of God in both his gospel and in the revelation of John then he talks about the Passover about the Lamb of God so we talk about the Passover lamb but it was a an adult uh, it was one year old completely adult this ram but we find this in Exodus 12 verse 1 till 6 the Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt this month shall be for you the beginning of the months it shall be the first month of the year for you. Yeah, because Nisan was the seventh month, but then here it becomes the first month of the feast calendar. Tell all the congregation of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, so on the tenth day of Nisan, the tenth day of Abib, they shall take every man a lamb according to their father's houses, a lamb for a household. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male, a year old, and you shall take it from the sheep or from the goats. So it had to be one of the, you know, it had to be either of the sheep or of the goat, a ram or a, or a goat. And you shall keep it until the 14th day of this month, when the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill their lambs in the evening. <coughs> this is quite special because it's taken on the 10th day, singled out. It has to be a perfect lamb, perfect ram for the sacrifice. It has to be a, a, a male, a, it has to be a, a male animal, um, of one, uh, of one year old, a male of old. You shall take it from the sheep or from the goats. So, uh, and it is to be kept until the 14th day of the month. So this is the only time that we have that an animal is singled out at a special date, the 10th of the month, and is kept till the 14th of the month. And this was for, you know, to, to protect them against the 10th plague, which was the death of the firstborn uh, sons in Egypt. And as a protection against that, the blood had to be put on the, on the lintel and on the posts of the door. And if the angel saw that, it would pass over. Hence the, t the term of Passover and a Passover lamb, because the angel passed over. But this Passover lamb of the 14th had to be singled out on the 10th and kept for four days. So we have to you know, bear that in mind, because we're going to come, we will see that later as well. Uh, the second time this date comes up is that it's sort of the setting apart of Israel. When 40 years later, when Israel enters, this, this is the exit of this was the exit of Egypt. The first time we saw this tent of Nisan, and the second time we see it 40 time 40 years later, when Israel enters the land of of, of Palestine, of Israel, of uh, Canaan, whatever you want to call it. And of course, once they started living there, it was called the land of Israel. In Joshua 4, verse 17. Joshua therefore commanded the priests come out of the Jordan. This is when they go through the Jordan and when the, he says to the priests come out of the Jordan and when the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord came up from the midst of the Jordan and the soles of the priests feet were lifted up on dry ground the waters of the Jordan returned to their place and overflowed all its banks as before. The people came out of the Jordan on the 10th day of the first month. So on the 10th of Nisan. And they encamped in Gilgal on the east border of Jericho. And then there is a circumcision of the people and they are being healed on the 11th and the 12th. So they were circumcised on the 11th and they healed on the 12th and the 13th. And on the 14th of, uh, the, you know, on the 14th of Nisan, it says they, they celebrated the Passover at Gilgal, which apparently they hadn't celebrated in the past 38 years. Uh, after this, the, 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 this, this clash with, with Moses and with God for not believing the ten spies, 
because the people in the desert had not, for those 38 years, had not been circumcised. So then you can't celebrate Passover. So they, they had this Passover of the first year, the second year, and then for 37 years they had no Passover, and then in Gilgal they had the Passover again. So more or less the, the people were set apart on the 10th of Nisan, going dry, dry shod through the river of Jordan. And this setting apart on the 10th, we can find, we, we find this also in Leviticus 16. But then it's not the 10th of uh, Nisan, but the 10th of Tishri. On the 10th of Tishri, two goats, two male goats, two he goats are set apart, and one for the Lord, which will be brought, its blood will be brought within the Holy of Holies, Holies and one for Azazel. The, 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 the he goat that will be sent away. So they're also they're set apart in the tenth, but then that goat, that he goat, is killed on the tenth directly. They are not kept till the fourteenth, but they're also set apart on the tenth. Uh, Leviticus 16, verse 7. Then he shall take the two goats and set them before the Lord at the door of the tent of meeting. And Aaron shall cast lots upon the two goats, one lot for the Lord and the other lot for Azazel. Yeah, they were perfect goats without blemish, but Aaron was not allowed to choose which one was to represent which. Uh, a lot had to be cast. And Aaron shall present the goat on which the lot fell for the Lord and offer it as a sin offering. But the goat on which the lot fell for Azazel shall present it alive before the Lord to make atonement over it that it may be sent away into the wilderness of Azazel. So this was a setting and this is important because the 10th of Nisan and six months later the 10th of uh, Tishri this, this is half a year but that means that if you take times times and a half a time time times and a half a time, three, three and a half years. From three and a half years from the 10th of Nisan, you get to three and a half years later to the 10th of, of Tishri, or the other way around. From the 10th of Tishri, if you take three and a half years later, you get to the 10th of Nisan. And we will see that with uh, Jesus. So, the th and then the 10th of Nisan is also mentioned in Ezekiel, Ezekiel 40 verse one. Ezekiel get this very extensive, very long uh, vision. Uh, it, it, it entails nine chapters in the in the Old Testament, Ezekiel 40, 48, about the temple of the millennium. And he gets this vision on the 10th of Nisan as well. And as if the temple and Jerusalem is set apart on the 10th of Nisan, when he has this vision. Jesus Christ, this is less known, but Jesus Christ is set apart on the 10th Nisan as well. If you, if you put all the elements of the last week if, of Jesus Christ and you put them all together, then um, he died, of course, on the 14th of Nisan. And then on the 10th of Nisan, four days before that, he enters Jerusalem on a donkey. And uh, this is described in the Synoptic Gospels. Uh, the, the, the three Gospels of uh, Matthew, Mark and uh, Luke. But John has more about that day that there's also a voice from heaven on that day. And let's see what happens. And it's like Jesus Christ was set apart. He was set apart um, uh, as the coming lamb that was to be slain. And the people, they set him apart by, by, uh, by, by shouting Hosanna and by shouting the King of Israel. And of course, four days later, three and a half days later, he was crucified as the king of the Jews. So the evening before, he had his feet anointed by Mary. That also set him apart, the anointing. That was for the anointing for his death. And he was, he was anointed in the evening. And then, of course, then it says here in John 12, verse 12, the next day. That means after the anointing by Mary the evening before. The next day a great crowd who had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. 
So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. And Jesus found a young ass and sat upon it as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming, sitting on an ass's colt. His disciples did not understand this at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that this had been written of him and had been done to him. The crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead bore witness. The reason why the crowd went to meet him was that they had heard he had done this sign. The Pharisees then said to one another, You see that you can do nothing. Look, the whole world has gone after him. So this coming into Jerusalem on a donkey, on a colt of a donkey, that was on the 10th of Nisan. He was more or less set apart on the 10th of Nisan, but he was also set apart by this heavenly voice. Now among those who went up to worship at the feast were some Greeks. Of course, these were Greek Jews. Well, I think these were Greek Jews, Greek speaking Jews. Could have been Greeks just like that. God fearers, that's a possibility as well. So these came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Andrew went with Philip and they told Jesus. And Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. He who loves his life loses it, and he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me, and where, and where I am, there shall my servant be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, for this purpose I have come to this hour. And then he says, Father, glorify your name. And then we get this heavenly voice. I have glorified it and I will glorify it again. So this is the voice of the Father. And we have the voice of the Father three times in the New Testament. You know, at the baptism of Christ uh, and at the glorification of the Mount, at the Mount, and here on the tenth of Nisan when he comes into the to Jerusalem. Then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing by heard it and said that it had thundered. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the ruler of this world be cast out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to myself. He said, this to, he said this to show by what death he was to die. He was to be lifted up on the cross, of course. Well, the three times, like I said, three times we have the voice of the Father. And the first time we can find in Matthew 3, verses 16 to 17. And this could very well have been on the 10th of Tishri, three and a half years before, three and a half years before his death. On the 10th of Tishri, the Day of Atonement, uh, it's a day of fast and it could very well be that this day of fast is the very th the first day of the 40 days of fasting that he was about to do uh, i can't prove this but it was around this time anyway it was three and a half years before his death and when jesus was, bapt was baptized he, matthew 3 verse 16 he went up immediately from the water and behold the heavens were opened and he saw the spirit of god descending like a dove and alighting on him and lo a voice of from heaven saying this is my beloved son with whom i am well pleased this is my beloved son son with whom i am well pleased so this is the voice of the father because only the father can say this is my beloved son so this is the father speaking and he's more he's, in a way he set apart for his ministry for three and a half years for three and a half years before his death and then we find the second time the second time the father speaks from heaven in matthew 17 of the first five verses and this was possibly on trumpets because peter says let us make three tents and in hebrew in my hebrew bible says let us make three sukkot 
you know, three uh, booths, uh, three tabernacles, three tents. And uh, this, of course, trumpets is very close to tabernacles. So it could very well be on the Feast of, Ta the feast of uh, Trumpets that this, uh, this heavenly voice for was. And then it was three years after the first time, three years after his baptism, his glorification on the mount. And it says here in Matthew 17 verse 1, And after six days Jesus took with him Peter and James and John his brother, and led them up a high mountain apart. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his garments became white as light. And behold, there appeared to them Moses and Elijah, talking with him. And Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is well that we are here. If you wish, I will make three booths here, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. He was still speaking when, lo, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and a voice from the cloud said, this is my beloved son again the, again the father speaking only the father can say this is my beloved son this is my beloved son with whom i am well pleased listen to him and this is the second time and the third time when jesus christ is set apart by this heaven and actually by the way the thing that christ was talking about with moses and with elijah that was about his coming death which was half a year later, and in his death, his, 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 his going out, his exodus, he was talking about his exodus, exodus, it says in, uh, in the Greek. And then John 12, verse 28, we just read that, it's the third time of the voice of the Father. Father, glorify thy name. Then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. So we have the voice of the Father three times. And the first time was probably on the Feast of Atonement, and the second time was probably on the Feast of, on, on the day, on the 10th of Nisan, setting Christ apart four days before he actually was crucified. And also the 10th of, uh, the, the, on Atonement, he was set apart three and a half years before he was crucified. Now, um, we have, we have in Peter, Peter says this one year with the Lord is a thousand years, 2 Peter 3 verse 8. But do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. So one day is thousand years and a thousand years is as one day. But uh, if you add up all the, all the genealogies and all the numbers of the Old Testament, then you can calculate the year uh, the year the, 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 the year 4000 in this case the year 4000 4000 from Adam and then 4000 years later the year 4000 which I calculated is somewhere between 30 and 30 and 40 AD between 30 and 40 AD so the um, the death of Jesus and the resurrection of Jesus and the ascension of Jesus and the, and the pouring out of the Holy Spirit was all at the end of the fourth millennium. At the end of the fourth millennium, this happened that Christ died. So, um, if we take these four days, then then it's the fourth day since Adam. So, as Christ died on the fourteenth of Nisan, we can we can label these millennia uh, by calendar dates. So we can say, let's say, let us say, um, for argument's sake, let us say that this, his death was the 14th of Nisan. So that his fourth millennium was the 14th of Nisan. That means that after creation, uh, after the creation of Adam, the first millennium is the 11th of Nisan. That's when Enoch went to heaven. And the second millennium, that's that's when the flood was in the second millennium that's uh, the 12th of Nisan and then the creation of Israel that's in the third millennium that's the 13th of Nisan and then uh, you know the temple and the splits the, the the split of Judah and Israel and the falling away of Israel and the falling away of, of Judah and the, uh, the captivities and then in the end Christ 
that was all on the 14th of Nisan, and Christ then died on the 14th of Nisan. So let's 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 play this this game by labeling those four millennia, those the first, second, third, and fourth millennium with the 11th, 12th, the 13th, and the 14th of 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 Nisan, because then we get an, then Christ was Christ died on the day the 14th of Nisan. But then that millennium was also the 14th of Nisan. And then we get an interesting thing. Then we get an interesting thing because then it means that he was set apart before the creation of Adam. Then the time before the... Actually, there's no earthly time then there. But the time before, or the period before the creation of Adam becomes the 10th of Nisan. And we can see in Scripture that Christ was set apart in this time before before the creation of the world before the creation of adam on the 10th of nisan to die four thousand years later just like he was in, just like the passover lamb was set apart on the 10th to die four days later just like that christ was set apart on the 10th of nisan speaking of millennia before creation to die 4,000 years later, to die four millennia later, to die four days of a thousand years later. And um, in John 17, verse 24, we read the following. And, uh, Father, I desire that they, they may, that they also, whom thou hast given me, may be with me where I am, to behold my glory, which thou hast given me in thy love for me, before the foundation of the world. So God loved Jesus before the foundation of the world. Jesus was there. We read this in John 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And verse 14, and the Word has become flesh and dwelt a tabernacle among us. So the Father loved the Son from before the foundation of the world. Also knowing, of course, what the Son would do before the foundation of the world that he would give his life and 1 Peter 1 verse 18 till 20 also talks about the foundation of the world 1 Peter 1 verse 18 you know that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your fathers not with perishable things such as silver and gold we are bought by God but not with silver and gold but with the precious blood of Christ but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was made manifest at the end of times for our sake, for your sake. It says Christ was destined before the foundation of the world. Yes, that's the tenth of Nisan, if you take it on a thousand for a day and a day for a thousand year scale. He died on the 14th of Nisan and before the creation of Adam, before the creation of the world that was on the 10th of Nisan, he was de destined before the foundation of the world. So, you know, the death of Christ and, and the fact that there had to be a Messiah was not sort of, oops, it's gone all wrong um, with this first sin of Adam and now I have to think of something else. No, it was... It was pre-planned. God knew all along what would happen. And Christ was already destined, predestined, preordained to be the Passover lamb before the foundation of the world. And of course, he is called the Passover lamb in 1 Corinthians 5 verse 7. He is called the Passover lamb. And Revelations verse 13 and 8. And all who dwell on earth will worship it. This is about the beast. Everyone whose names has not been written before the foundation of the world in the book of life of the Lamb that was slain. Again, the Lamb was slain before the foundation of the world. He was, say, he was slain in God's mind, in God's plan. It was all planned. In God's mind, he was slain. So we see that the Passover Lamb is there in Egypt is set apart on the 10th to be slain on the 14th to save the firstborn. And Israel was the firstborn son of God. And he, it went dry shot through the Jordan like a baptism uh, on, the, on the 10th of Nisan. 
and Christ was set apart on the tenth of Nisan when he entered when he entered Jerusalem on the don on the on the donkey on the on, on a colt of a, of, a, of a donkey, and and he died on the fourteenth, and he was set apart on the tenth, and he died for our sins. So the question is, is did he die for you? Have you accepted the blood of Jesus Christ for your sins?